Welcome to another episode of Histology Labs. This is Dr. Bison AM. Today we're looking at connective tissue proper and this is your practical five of your histology labs. Let's get into this video. Remember we offer lessons in all of the medical courses in anatomy. physiology biochemistry immunology and microbiology biology and organic chemistry you can register with us by texting us on whatsapp on the number that is displaying on your screen plus two six zero five nine seven five four nine seven seven nine zero all right so what are the objectives of this lab today so by the end of this session you should be able to classify connective tissue, name the location and general composition of the loose connective tissue, name the different cell types that occur in connective tissue as well as the structure and function of each one of them. You describe the location, the arrangement, light microscopic structure and function of different types of protein fibers. Remember, there are three types of protein fibers that we're going to look at in this lab collagen elastic fibers and reticular fibers you describe the appearance structure and function of mucus and dense, dense connective tissue and lastly you name the various diseases and conditions affecting the connective tissue before we look at the histological slides let's look at some introduction to connective tissue so what you need to know is that connective tissue is the most abundant type of tissue in the body. It provides a matrix that supports and physically connects other tissues and cells together to form the organs of the body. Connective tissue consists of cells and extracellular matrix, which is denoted as ECM. Extracellular matrix consists of different combination of protein fibers, and ground substance. Now, the specific composition of the extracellular matrix will determine the biochemical properties of the connective tissue. Okay. Now, the connective tissue chiefly binds and anchors and supports various cells, tissues, and organs of the body. The connective tissue Tissue matrix contains numerous cell types that provide connect, uh, protection and defense against bacterial invasion and foreign bodies. So what you should know and understand is that connective tissue has got white blood cells that are involved in immunity. Okay, so connective tissue proper is classified as either loose connective tissue or dense connective tissue, depending on the amount, the type, arrangement and abundance of cells fibers and ground substance that are in that connective tissue now let's classify connective tissue connective tissue can either be classified as embryonic connective tissue or adult connective tissue embryonic connective tissue is what we call mucous connective tissue adult connective tissue is subdivided into three types you have connective tissue proper which can either be loose or dense connective tissue or you have supporting connective tissue which is found in cartilage and in bone and you have special connective tissue which include blood, the lymphatic and adipose connective tissue. Alright, now let's look at the slides that we're supposed to draw. So the first slide that we're going to look at is slide number two which is the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord demonstrates mucus connective tissue so what you're supposed to do is that you inspect the slide that will be projected shortly and you look at the two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein embedded in a special embryonic connective tissue that we call Wharton's jelly so now underneath the microscope you examine the tissue you observe also the large spindle-shaped fibroblasts which have delicate cytoplasmic processes and you also look for the collagen fibers okay you also pay attention to the amniotic epithelia on the surface of the coat 
it is very important that you identify what type of epithelia makes up the amniotic epithelium. So in this slide, you're going to sketch at low power and at high power. Let's look at the low power representation. So this here is what we call the umbilical cord. How do you identify it? You have one vein, this is the umbilical vein, and we have two arteries. This is the artery and this is the other arteries. These three vessels are embedded in these collagenous, this connective tissue that we call Watton's jelly. Now the Watton's jelly has got fibroblasts and it has collagen fibers embedded in it. You cannot see them at low power. So just make these sketches, make the sketch at low power, label the uh, blood vessels and the Watton's jelly. And then at high power, you now come, these are collagen fibers. And then these cells that you see, this cell here, this cell here, this cell here, those are fibroblasts. The fibroblasts have got cytoplasmic processes that connect them together like this. This fibroblast is connected to this fibroblast. All right. Now, this amniotic membrane epithelia, what type of epithelia is it? It looks like simple cuboid epithelium. So look at it, identify what type of epithelia it is and label it as well at high power. So for this slide, draw at high power and at low power. All right. Let's move on to dense irregular connective tissue that is demonstrated in sublingual glands. Now, we've seen sublingual glands before when we're doing exocrine glands. In this diagram, you should only draw it at low power. Okay. So, what happens here is that the connective tissue is made up of collagen fibers and the connective tissue will separate the sublingual glands into lobules. Let's look at it. Okay, so now you should observe how the tissue is divided into lobules by the connective tissue. So this is a lobule here. Remember we said that the pale part of the lobule are mucous arsenide and the purple part of the lobule are serous arsenide. This lobule here and this lobule here are separated by this septum. This septum is made up of dense irregular connective tissue which has collagen fibers you only draw this at low power okay now let's look at dense regular connective tissue that is found in the tendon okay. so you should not regularly arrange collagen bundles with a wavy course and then you should also notice the fibroblasts that forms rows of dark elongated nuclei between the fiber bundles you draw it at low power and at high power now let's look at the low power so this is the low power you can't really appreciate the collagen fibers but they are here collagen fibers and these dark spots that you are able to see here those are the fibroblasts so just draw it at low power and then at high power you are now able to appreciate these wavy collagen fibers as you can see. So here this is a wavy collagen fiber, wavy collagen fiber, wavy collagen fiber. They are arranged in parallel. So you are able to see that this is regular. And then these dark nucleus that you are able to see, those are fibroblasts. Okay, so you label the regularly shaped collagen fibers and the fibroblasts that are found in a tendon. Amazing. Let's move on to loose areola connective tissue, which is slide H2.13. Loose areola connective tissue is found beneath the skin, usually in the hypodermis of the skin, which is also known as the subcutaneous layer. It is also found beneath epithelium, the beneath uh, the ileum, and beneath any epithelium. Okay. So now, you're supposed to look at it at low power and high power. So this is 
low power. This is the loose or areola connective tissue, this part here. So this is just, these are the glands that are found in the ileum. Simple tubular glands that we saw when we were doing exocrine glands. Beneath it, beneath this epithelia, you have the loose areola connective tissue. This is low power, so you can't really appreciate. Let's go to high power. This is not clear. This is loose areola connective tissue. So this dark stained, deeply stained red uh, protein fibers, these are collagen. And then these cells here, these are the fibroblasts. And then this poorly stained, these are the elastic ones. So you really appreciate connective tissue protein fibers when you lose you use methyl methylene blue methylene blue so methylene blue will demonstrate these are the elastic reason these are the elastic protein fibers and then these ones are the collagen protein fibers this is very clear this is a collagen protein fiber these ones that look like strings and lines these are the elastic protein fibers and then these cells here, this cell here, this cell here, this cell here, have got like dark stains in them. These are macrophages that have phagocyzed, phagocytosed material inside of them. And then these other cells are the fibroblasts. So for the high power representation drawing, use this diagram to draw because it is very clear. It was, it was stained by methylene blue. Okay, now let's look at reticular fibers that you find in the liver. To stain reticular fibers in the liver, we use a technique called silver impregnation technique. Silver impregnation technique. The silver impregnation technique will stain the reticular fibers uh, black. And because they stain black, they are known to be agriophilic. You only sketch this one at high power so this is low power here this is how your reticular fibers look in the liver but here you're just observing you're observing just observing and then you make a drawing at high power so what you see here these are the reticular fibers okay reticular fibers reticular fibers reticular fibers just draw a portion of it and label them to be reticular fibers so this is where you see the reticular fibers in the liver using the silver stain let's look at the last slide that we're going to look at today under connective tissue which are your elastic fibers these are going to be demonstrated using the iota so we use hematoxylin to stain or to demonstrate the elastic fibers in the iota. So what we're going to do is that we're going to observe the middle layer of the wall of the iota, which is the tunica media. Remember, blood vessels have got three layers. The innermost tunica interna, the middle tunica media, and the outermost tunica externa. So you draw this or you sketch this at high power and at low power. Okay. So this is low power representation. So this one is showing the tunica media. And these fibers that you're able to see here, these are the elastic fibers that are found in the iota. It makes so much sense that you have elastic fibers in your iota because blood vessels are supposed to be elasticated. When blood is passing through there, they're supposed to be elastic. So you can't, you can't find uh, collagen fibers in very large amounts in blood vessels. They are there, but the most abundant type of protein fibers in blood vessels are elastic fibers. Let's look at the high power representation. So this is your tunica media. And what you see here, these, those are the elastic fibers that are found in the iota. So this was the last 
uh, slide, histological slide that you are supposed to draw in under connective tissue. After that, you write the exercise now, which consists of six questions. So question one just tells us the types of stem cells that give rise to connective tissue. Question two is supposed to be answered in a table. This table here. So you draw, you name the connective tissue, the type of cells that are found in the connective tissue, and the function of that, connect, of that cell. All right. Then question three is, what are the different types of T lymphocytes and their functions? Remember, the T lymphocytes are found in connective tissue. So you're supposed to know the types, the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes and their specific functions. I'm sure this you learned in immunology, so it's going to be very easy. Number four, what type of connective tissue to be specific are the following? The tendons, the dura mater, the capsule, aponeurosis, and the ligaments. Question five, in the umbilical cord, the umbilical vein is from left or right? Which side? Is it the left or the, the right? And then when the, umbilic, when the umbilical vein degenerates after birth, what structure does it form? What is the remnant of the umbilical cord? Number six, list any five connective tissue disorders. Specify which protein fiber is defective in each. So this is very, very important. I hope you have learned much in this presentation video. And I hope you do the most on your lab. This is a very short lab on connective tissue fibers. This is Dr. Bison EM. Let's learn and medicine together the Unza way. I'll see you in the next video.